Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, the WATR 1320 AM preview for our game of the week, where I talked to just yesterday, Coach Sarlo of the Kennedy Eagles. And now I'll be talking to the head coach who he'll be facing on Friday. The game will be broadcast on WATR 650 pregame for 7 p.m. kickoff, live from Municipal Stadium for the regular season opener as far as Friday. Now, Will be and Sonia play on Thursday. Um, I'm pleased to have on the head coach of the St. Paul Falcons, Joe Cianciola. Coach, thanks so much for being able to come on. Thanks, Chris, man. And it doesn't it sound good to hear that it's game week and we got Friday night kickoffs, baby. You know, it's this whole week has just been, you know, it's been building for, you know, since last season, since last year. And it's just great to, you know, we're finally getting back at it. No, it's great. It's, you know, like you said, it's, it's weird to say it. It's, you can kind of feel the energy starting to really, you know, I was at practice today for the Kennedy Eagles and I could really kind of feel the intensity starting to at, you know, towards the end of practice, because they really, there's not a lot of practice time left because you have walkthroughs typically the day before and then Friday is kickoff game day. So practices are starting to become slim when it comes to the game on Friday. Yeah, uh, I talked to my I talked to the team about it today when we when we brought it up at the end and even throughout the practice. It's like, man, it's it's game week now. Can you feel the intensity that needs to be there? Can you feel the anxiety and the anxiousness? Can you feel it? This is what game week feels like, and it's, there's not much time left. Uh, so the, the sense of urgency definitely picks up. You know, they do. You know, Kennedy, they do a great job. They're they're always a tough opponent. Uh, you know, they're always going to play for 48 minutes. Uh, so you know what type of intensity that they're going to have there. We got to get ready to go up against it. You know, coach, I'd be reminisced if I didn't ask real quick, you know, quick as far as, you know, you took over, you know, obviously for coach Kennedy who went on to coach uh, somewhere else in Connecticut and good luck with him. And I know he's a fantastic coach. He's a great lax coach in and of itself. Um, now you think of the past two coaches between Jude Kelly and Coach Kennedy, um, I know you're very close with the both of them. You know, for people who may not know, how much have they and had they meant to you during their time at St. Paul, and even now, while they're go out, you know, while they're out doing other things. Um, you know, they they mean a lot to me. You know, they were one of the first people that uh, Coach Kelly was responsible, you know, for introducing me to St. Paul and bringing me here in the first place. And because of him, you know, I got to know Chris and for the last six years. Um, you know, I, I see the time and the dedication that they put into, whether it be uh, football or football and the cross in the case for Chris. You know, just this, the way they act, the way they interact with young people, uh, the time and the effort and the dedication, I was able to witness that firsthand. And, you know, and Coach Kelly is, uh, you know, you know, he, He's been around the block a couple of times, you know, basically coaching football for the better part of 50 years at a high school level. Uh, if you can't learn anything from someone with that much wealth of knowledge, then, you know, you might not be in the right frame in terms of, you know, coaching and stuff like that, you know. So uh, they mean a ton to me. I talk to them, you know, as much as I can, asking them, you know, from things for football or and more importantly, it's just stuff about life as well. And I think that's when you get real, real deep or, you know, real connections and real friendships when you, you know, you talk more than just whatever sport you're coaching. When you were named the head coach for St. Paul, who was the first person that contacted you, texted you, called you to wish you congratulations? Well, I, uh, Mr. Denny, he called me while I was, while I was out working. And then, uh, you know, I actually told my dad first because he was with me, you know, so he was the first one uh, to find out. And then, uh, you know, and then those were two of the first calls that I made were Coach Kelly and Coach Kennedy were some were two of the first people to find out. Um, you know, it, was a, it, is, it is an exciting moment and I've had, you know, it's, and it's been fun ever since. You know, I could say, and I think you would agree with me that being a head coach, you were primed for it. I mean, you came from Watertown, 
very well oiled machine as far as the program itself and how they, you know, I, you know, even though I didn't go to Watertown high school, you know, my dad played football at Watertown and, you know, they live and breathe football there, plain and simple. Football is, is like God down there. And I think you would agree with that. Um, and then you going off to Springfield and doing what you did there and just seeing how Springfield just produces uh, coaching talent. I mean, Coach Joseph, who's at West Hill, Serecchio at Ledger, yourself. Um, I just think that head coach, you know, a head coaching job was yours. It was just a matter of when, not if. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you talk about the places that I've been, you know, Watertown, you know, for all the success the other sports have had, whether it be soccer, baseball, you know, hockey, they have a state championship. Um, you know, I, I always think of it as a, as a football town. There's nothing that galvanizes a town like, you know, Friday nights under the lights or Thanksgiving morning, you know, freezing your butt off and uh, watching, you know, those games. Then you think about Springfield, man, you can't, you can't think of coaching without Springfield in there. Uh, just the environment up there, the way they operate, the way they carry themselves, you know, in the, you know, the, the leadership that you have up there. There's a reason why it's called the Mecca. It's kind of funny, you know, I'll go to conferences and I'll say I'm from Springfield and they kind of roll their eyes. They're like, oh, you're a part of the mafia, huh? Because, you know, you can't usually find, you can't usually go to a conference without finding a Springfield guy. Whether it be football, whether, not even just football either. But, you know, whether, no matter what sport, especially strength and conditioning as well. And, uh, you know, it's just one of, and like you said, it's, it's one of those things, not to, I won't say the mafia part. I think that's funny, but, you know, Springfield has, you know, Springfield has such a, a history when it comes to not just the sports coach, but the fact of the strength and conditioning, they have a litany of talent beyond sports. I mean, I think that's a compliment to the college. You know, some people may be jealous, but in jealousy comes the fact of, well, they wish they could have that. Yeah, it's a it's a huge tote to uh, Springfield. They've been doing it for for a long time. You look at uh, you know the NFL kicking off this Sunday. You'll find Springfield people that are all over this, those sidelines, um, and as well as you know, this past weekend kicking off you know college all over the place. D one, D three, D two. You know you'll find them all over, and you know some people could wilt under that pressure. You know, okay, you have Springfield attached to your name. You know, it, it might get your, your foot in the door somewhere. It's still up to you of what you're going to do with it. You know, okay, you're a Springfield guy. Now you got to live up to it, and that's part of the challenge. And I and I embrace that, and I uh, and I embrace that challenge in terms of, you know, carrying on what Coach Kelly and Coach Kennedy have done here, carrying on the, you know, the Watertown name and the people who formed me to to who I am, and then you know the Springfield people too. You know, it's pressure, but I welcome it, and you know I just hope to, you know, make make them all proud and let's talk about the team and I, I think you will make Springfield Watertown everybody proud just because of what you've done in your re, you know your resume in the past and what you'll do in the future coach um I just want to talk about as far as the the players this you know this year because you only have a couple players coming back who have any varsity experience how has it been for you as far as I mean have you had to I don't want to say dumb it down, but kind of go to square one and kind of get the, you know, grease the wheel, get things back because there was a lot of time missed because of the lost season last year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it, and it's been a lot of, it's actually, you know, while it is challenging, you know, it's, it's kind of fun and humbling because that's where you really got to do your hardcore coaching, you know, um, in terms of, you know, bringing the young and the unexperienced up to ready to play into a varsity game. You know, uh, I think that, and even that OTA period was just, it was, I called it football one oh one. You know, we went over what the pieces of equipment are, you know, how to put on, you know, what the, you know, what, how to hold certain things, you know, what, you know, I showed them the equipment shed and, you know, just little things like that, that you, as a, you know, someone who's been around football for however long, you know, may take for granted, you know, just, you know, they may not have ever done it before. And, you know, it's, it's been, it's been fun to, to build from the ground up. Cause it'll, you know, I told when I first addressed the team, I told, you know, get immersed in the process, enjoy it. 
uh, and be humble when the success comes. Um, because, you know, later on down the line, you'll look at how far we came and it'll make the, and it'll make the destination that much more exciting and that much more worth it. You know, and you speak of the, you know, the, the destination as far as the work going into it. And, you know, when I think of St. Paul football, and the last time I saw St. Paul was when Jude Kelly was on the sidelines. I think of big offensive line, the triple option, occasionally throwing, but more so ground and pound and just bury, just burn the clock, but also bully the team through three quarters, four quarters. So then that way late in the game, they were just tired of getting hit. And that's where the offensive line really showed strength in that second half. Are you continuing that at St. Paul without giving up too, too much going into Friday night's game against Kennedy? Um, you know, as a high school coach, you got to be able to adapt to your personnel. I think, you know, if you may not remember, but uh, when Coach Kelly first came to St. Paul, he was a spread it out, throw the ball around, along the, around the lot kind of guy. And then, you know, he kind of tapped into his roots back when he was at East Catholic in terms of bringing the wishbone back. You know, uh, I just look forward to, you know, and that's part of the challenges and that's some of the exciting parts about being, you know, a head coach in terms of uh, adapting to your personnel, right? Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, being, having a little bit more balance of an approach as opposed to, you know, leaning hev so heavily one side or the other. And you talk about the personnel and kind of what you have is, you know, when I watch you guys or when I'm, you know, in the press box or if I'm on the field, you know, is this a St. Paul team that is big or maybe a little bit smaller, but athletic? What kind of team could I be seeing on Friday? Uh, well, we have our fair share of, you know, of bigger kids. I would say we're probably a little bit more, uh, we're a little bit more athletic centered rather than just the, you know, two, you know, one foot split, you know, smaller um, kind of mindset. You know, we're a little bit more of an athletic team, so we're going to look to utilize that, those those parts and strengths, while we do have a couple of kids with some size. Okay. And then as looking at the, the, the main importance, which I think is huge, you need to have a strong offensive line and defensive line. I know that's a position that, you know, going back to high school, is near and dear to you, man. Kind of talk to me about, you know, is that a position, both positions, I should say, that that group, do you feel comfortable going into week one on Friday with that core, the offense and defensive line? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's funny. We were talking about offense and defensive line, and I was talking to him the other day. Uh, you know, if I was born again and I was allowed to play football, you know, I, you know, I would play offensive line again, because there's no, you know, while the quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, you know, the occasional linemen scoop and score, I guess. They score those, the touchdowns to get the names in the paper. Uh, I truly believe that there is no bond like an offensive lineman's bond. Okay, me at the center position, it was, you know, even more full circle. You know, I got to trust the people to the left and to the right of me. And I'm usually a little out in front because they got set set up on me. Uh, I think, you know, there's, you know, there, there's no bond like a lineman, like a lineman bond, just because of how hard that those positions are. Not only do you have to know where to go, but, you know, you also have to perform a little bit more physically than, say, some of the skilled position players. And while we do have a young group, uh, you know, there, we have a young group that's growing and meshing together each and every day of practice. And I'm 100 percent confident in their abilities to be able to perform on Friday. So looking at what kind of, and I know you spoke a little bit about kind of the, the players and such and what kind of team you'll be showing, is this going to be, and again, you don't have to share if you don't want to, because I'm, I'll see it on Friday and so will everybody else. What kind of offense could we see on Friday? You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look a little different than we have the last couple of years in terms of the lining up together and uh, just, you know, mushing forward. I'll just say it's a little bit, we're going to be look to have a little bit more balanced approach. Okay. And then on defense, again, don't have to share if you don't want to. I'd understand that. Trust me. You know, I'm sure people will be watching this, trying to get secrets as much as they can. 
are you going to be, you know, just thinking off of kind of how much I've, you know, I know you, are you going to try to bring the house, bring, you know, four, three, three, four, you know, what kind of defense, you know, could you be showcasing on Friday? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna showcase a defense that's gonna control the control the gaps, discipline, and uh, rally to the ball. So not trying to give up the big plays. Yeah, uh, it's it, you know a team defense. You know, we're gonna line up and play team defense. You know, in terms of you know, hold, you know controlling the front seven and uh, you know and then taking care of business on the back on the back end. And on that back end, are the corners, are you, like, are you, are you kind of telling your corners or is your defensive coordinator wanting the corners and the safety to be like, almost like man to man, be physical with the wide receivers, just so they know, hey, we're here. So that way late in the game, you never know what that kind of contact early could do. I think some of it too will be, uh, it will be opponent to opponent. Based on scouting report, you know how some of their plays are run, different plays are run, um, but you know I believe you have to be able to play both. And you know we've been prepping our guys, getting ready to play both both zone and man, um, because based on game flow situation, uh, you know you may shift them more than one to the other. So uh, you got to get you know your players ready for both of them, you know, to both be able to perform in man and zone coverage. And getting those players prepared, I think especially going into week one, because, you know, again, talking with various coaches beyond, you know, coach Sarla with Kennedy, trying to prepare for a week one matchup, you're showing film from 2019. And it's hard to really get anything from it when you're showing it to your players, because so much has changed, not just the players on your own side, but also on the opposing side. So how are you in any way, preparing your program, your players for Kennedy on Friday? Um, you know, in terms of tapping into those, you know, films from two years ago, you know, we, we look at it while the names and numbers may be different, you know, the, you know, coach Charlo who's been there uh, has done a, uh, done a great job. You know, he's, he's still there. So there's a little bit more, it's a little bit easier to kind of look at compared to if, you know, you're in their shoes, you know, you don't know exactly what we're doing. Uh, because of the playing two years ago, um, you know, you just kind of you you, you almost got to prepare for anything. Yeah, you, know, you look at you look at you know what those films showed in the past is like okay they showed X Y and Z look, but okay in 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 this in this situation they showed X Y and Z look two years ago. So you have to be prepared to see those looks again. Have I think you that's, Besides, besides solidifying what you do in terms of your philosophies and what you do, um, I think that's what you should have to go by. Have you also thought of, too, the fact that in 2019, they had, I think, almost a third of their starters, maybe a little bit more, were freshmen or sophomores, so now they're a little bit older? I mean, has that, has that come into your psyche? I mean, I'm sure, again – not knowing how much has changed for them, good or bad or indifferent, in two years is difficult. But do you think kind of seeing that film, you can kind of get an idea of who potentially could be back and you can kind of gauge, well, if they were doing this as freshmen or sophomores, maybe it's a little bit different now. Well, uh, especially if you played a young team two years ago, you know, just the you know, players are going to mature physically naturally anyway. Um, but, you know, Kennedy's always has, you know, great, they always have great athletes that are great in space and have, uh, you know, good speed and leaping abilities. So you always have to prepare for that no matter what, no matter what year it is. And they're always going to have, you know, uh, a big, you know, they're always going to have a couple of big guys up front. So, you know, you always have, you have to prepare for that and, and get ready, you know, to prepare the kids to, for the type of speed they might see. Um, because, you know, they'll, they're going to put their athletes in the best position to, to succeed. And that's always, it's always a challenge whenever you play um, Kennedy. They're always going to try and highlight those athletes, get them in space, and, you know, um, in terms of taking advantage of the speed aspect. Coach, I really do appreciate you coming on. It was great to be able to talk about the program a little bit and kind of looking at what, you know, matchups, previews, et cetera, for Friday. 
Uh, before I let you go, is there any particular uh, player or players that I should be watching for, you know, going into Friday's game against Kennedy? Um, you know, some of the, you know, one of our, one of our varsity, you know, returners in terms of Isaiah, Isaiah Connor um, is assuming look out for uh, uh, Eric Suzio in terms of uh, tight end and defensive end. And then uh, probably Jeremy Tavares, you know, a wide receiver. He's got some good speed, some good wiggle. So I think that those are a couple, but we, I look forward to uh, a lot of those young guys, you know, shown, shown what they have, you know, on, on under the bright lights and, you know, and, and me getting ready to put those names under, uh, in those players to watch list. I look forward as the season goes and starting on Friday, those young guys stepping up. So. Coach, thanks so much for being able to come on. It was a pleasure to be able to have you, you know, give a couple, I know you're busy, but being able to come on and share, you know, the experience as far as being main head coach for St. Paul, but also giving insight into the program and kind of what we could see on Friday. I'm really looking forward to it. And as someone who went to school with you, but going back, Hemingway, Swift, et cetera, you know, I'm happy to see that you're doing well and to see a Watertown person succeeding, you know, very, very well. I'm happy to see that. I appreciate it, man. And, you, and you've been killing it as well, you know, doing all the different stuff that you've been doing. You know, it's been, uh, it's been great to see, you know, you know, uh, you know, not only, uh, you know, what coaches and stuff do on the field, but it's, you know, it's been, ch it's challenging for everybody, especially this year, you know, the last couple of years, you know, you, what you've been doing, you know, whether it be radio or covering games or stuff like this, you know, it's been pretty great to see too. So. I appreciate that, man. But hey, I'm looking forward to being able to talk to you on the field on Friday, either an elbow or a handshake. I'll take either one. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to it. I'll wrap things up here in the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. And remember, Kennedy versus St. Paul, Friday, 7 p.m. at Municipal Stadium, 6.50 pregame on 1320 a.m. WATR. Hope to catch you and everybody else being able to listen right on 1320 a.m. WATR. Have a good one, everybody.